banana slam jam. Welcome back, everybody. We got ourselves a BSJ replay. We got 1700 MMR. Luna says, sub BSJ. I keep submitting replays and retracting them because I keep climbing. Last I submitted a replay was 640 MMR, and now I'm 1700. However, I'm on a massive losing streak right now. I wanted to get your thoughts on this game where I lost in a pretty pathetic way. I tend to have decent laning stages, and even when I lose my lane, I recover very quickly. I think my big problems are around team fighting and applying pressure correctly. It's frustrating because they are clearly low skill games, but I'm not dominating them like I previously was. How can I punish players for their mistakes? So the thing about Luna is, I pretty much never assume I'm tanky until I have maybe a BKB. So a lot of your ability to do anything on the map on Luna is if you can follow your teammates into something. Um, you obviously enable them to do things because you give them damage and night vision and decent team fight and all that kind of stuff. But you yourself are not the catalyst of doing things until at least BKB. So what I mean by this is that I judge my ability to push towers, take fights, all that kind of stuff based on the guy who's going to go in. So in this case, it'd be Centaur. So that's my decision making, but I'm just going to keep that in mind for the rest of the game. Going to fast forward. Do not do this. Do not do this, dude. Your beam is like really good. You can sometimes level this, the, the E, but the fact that you're leveling it before the lane even starts is really bad. You have a support that doesn't do a great job of securing range creeps for you. And that's what beam is for, is securing range creeps. Makes me cry a little bit. Just a little bit. You can also, like, beam that guy and deny the creep. Okay. So you've, like, surrendered all aggression just because you have no beam, which, notice what happens is you are scared to even walk up, and since there's no way to deter you, deter them from being aggressive, you just have to play like a pansy. Um, and obviously Luna in general is, like, a bit defensive, but... It's like, you can't even fight back, so it allows them to just have complete control of the lane. You should be beaming people around CS. Like, they should be getting beamed and then denied. Okay, not the perfect execution, but better. Quick assessment. Very easy. What's the lane doing? It's pushing away from you. So every single time one of your creeps get low, you hit them. It's that simple. It's so simple. Look at the creep wave equilibrium. Constantly assessing what's going on. Constantly assessing... How do I balance it back to normal? Because I'm a carry. I want stability. I want normal. Four creeps to their three. So what that means is that you should have like a sense of urgency. Right now, we see the lanes pushing. Stop hump faking and just fucking hit it three times. You tried to do it. You should have hit this one before that. Uh, hit this one. Uh, what is this? Who are you pump faking? He's literally not laning. What, what, what is it? Okay, dc for a bit, brain disconnect there, brain lag. Okay, now that we've completely ruined the lane equilibrium and pushed into their tower, we don't feel safe laning, we can go back and block. No, we're not gonna go back and block, we're gonna go back, okay. Beam, that's fine, it's fine. Okay, lane's still fucked, because we messed it up. Okay, we're just, now we're stuck beaming from a distance, because we literally ruined the lane on our own accord. We've now wasted 270 mana, because the lane's pushed out. CK's been nice enough to literally auto-attack it back into us, very nice guy right there. Very nice guy. You guys, in 1k, your laning equilibrium management is fucking atrocious. We're literally watching the freaking peewee leagues of laning equilibrium management. Can you guys just step it up a little bit? It's honestly not that complicated. You want the lane next to your tower. If the lane's pushing, deny. If the lane's pushing into you, push it, right? You don't want it shoved into your tower. You don't want it shoved into the opponent tower. Come on, guys. This is literally elementary school, Spongebob. Now that you've leveled Glaives, what that means is you've committed to shoving out the lane and leaving. Shoving out the lane and leaving. So there's two options for you. Obviously, a lot of people are going the 1404 build right now. So that means that you can either just opt to not level Glaives, meaning just holding the skill point so that you can keep the lane near your tower because you don't want to do this yet, or you need to commit. You know what I mean? You either need to commit and push out the lane, or you need to like hold it in place by not leveling Glaives. Either one's fine. Anything in between sucks, and you're doing in between, so... Dude, who are you pump faking? There's nobody here. So notice how you are trying to still lane, 
but then you leveled glaives and pushed out the lane. But then when the lane's pushed out, you can't lane. Are you like following me here? So what I'm emphasizing to you is some self-awareness. Notice that the lane's pushed out and you're playing hyper-passively beaming for CS. When the lane's near your tower, you're sitting inside of the creep wave, pump faking until you're death. Like you're literally just doing it until your heart's content. You have pump fake more than I did in like the entirety of my games yesterday. But that's okay, because you're literally controlling the fucking lane. But then the second you push it, you're playing like a little wimp in the back. Because you're supposed to. Like, the way you're playing based on where the lane is, is correct. But you're like, not caring about where the lane is, and just existing. So like, let's care about the lane. Honestly, good enough to lane in 1k, you'll stomp the shit out of people. If you just manage lane equilibrium better. Because they don't. The CK literally said, I don't want it here either, here you go. And you're like, but no, it's your turn! And then he's like, ah, I'm actually gonna go kill somebody instead of, like, farm the lane that's shoving into my tower. And you're like, okay, thank you. And then we just laugh at how bad everyone is, and then we move on. So you can push it in here and leave if you want. So you're gonna leave, okay. I mean, I myself am just not a Mask of Madness fan. I'm like really confused why you're jungling and you took a second point in beam. I can just pray that's a misclick. You know, I, I just pray to God that's a misclick. So you go for the morbid first. Okay. I mean, it's like a, it's like babying yourself through the sustain. I just fly myself a couple salves and constantly accelerate my farm. The way I look at it is, is this 900 gold could have been a glove of haste and boots. So you have treads, so you're just farming way faster. Like, along the way, you're buying a salve or two. Um, the only reason I don't hate Le the Mask of Madness is because you're against Venno Lesh, but you're not really interacting with these heroes for a while. You obviously need Satanic at some point, because you will need Sustain. But I, I, I personally think Mask of Madness on Luna's a bait, but that's me being biased. Apparently, a lot of the Chinese carries by it. But, like, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of skipping it, but, you know, that's just me. If you want to still go it, I'm not going to stop you. But you go back for treads before the Mask of Madness, which is kind of interesting. I kind of like that. You go and farm the Ancients with two points of beam. Okay. Good efficiency there. Oh, I like the quick, brief contrib contribution to the team there. That was nice. I like that a lot. I would have farmed Ancients one more time, but you're going to walk bottom. I don't hate it. I actually don't hate this at all. Wow, I like that move. That was a cool move. Yeah, we're gonna fast forward. I'm gonna farm your way back to these camps. No stacking though. GG. The reason why it's really important to sit there and stack for a second is because you're gonna run out of time to farm here. What I mean is like you clear waves and camps so fast that you're just like, now what? Right about now is the now what. So whenever you find stuff like this is where you're supposed to backtrack to 1150 and stack two camps rather than trying to clear the other camp before 12. You want your farming to end at the back or the be or the further up, right? You want it to be at the furthest back that you're going to farm or the furthest up that you're going to farm. And that's like perfect farm efficiency. So notice how you went to the very back of the farm and it's 1244. So then you have to look like, what could I have done to be more efficient on the front? That would have taken me an extra, like, 10 seconds. And then you'd just sit here and wait for Ancients, right? That's what you would do. But now you're just like, hmm, I don't have any time to do anything. So I'm going to go steal some farming from my Centaur real quick. Okay. Same thing here. I would have gone for another wave bottom. Because now what? I mean, I guess you showed up to a fight. Fuck it. You know what? If you're going to do that, fine. I wouldn't have done that myself, but I respect it. I'm actually going to say this right now. If I was in the position you were, I would have shown up to that because that is a great opportunistic thing to show up to. But I wouldn't have put myself in that situation in the first place. And the reason is, is because if the opponent doesn't do something stupid, you're just going to sit there wasting your time. I want you to prioritize maximizing your farm first because that is important at any bracket as a carry. So, like, right now, it's 1302. You know all the camps are respawning. You know with 100% certainty that you're going to end the minute here. Like, it's really obvious. You're going to end the minute at your triangle. So, why rush it back to your triangle at 1306 when you could go for the next wave that's going to get to about right here and then make your way back to the triangle? See this difference here? 
You take that extra 15 seconds to farm this, and then you make your way back to here. You clear these camps at like 1347, and then you're like, oh, I'm done farming for the minute. I've got 13 seconds left over. Let's go contribute to my team. But at the meantime, you maximize farm, maximize lane pressure, and then if there's an opportunity to fight at that point, it's great. So this is a chance where you took a good opportunity to fight. I like the adjustment in the situation that you're currently in, but you missed out on lane pressure. And that's what we're like really trying to emphasize here. And you even asked like, you know, how do you maximize pressure? So, so now you're going to make your way back bottom. Like I said, you work from back to forward, forward to back. And so this is a situation where you have really poor awareness, right? So right now it's 13, it's 1440. You already cleared ancients, but you don't want to confront this jug. So, because it's 1442, you've got all the time in the world on the front end of your farming. You can see that the lane shoved in, so there's nothing for you to do here until this creep wave, which is going to be here by like 1450. But there's a camp that you have a ward on right here. So, the perfect farm op pattern here would be farm this, because if you didn't have a ward, you might feel dangerous to walk up here. But you, you farm this camp, and then you meet the creep wave, this one right here. Uh, you can't see it because of like the way replay fog works, but it's right here. You'd farm it like 1450, like right here, because you're not confronting the jug, because he's going to clear this wave and leave. And then, because that's the minute mark again, it's going to be 15 minutes, you're going to go whoop, right back. But notice how you're not going the full distance aggressively anytime. You're kind of like conceding and just backing off. And what that means is now you're going to always be farming forward. What full-on aggression allows is for you to farm backwards in the next minute. And I will tell you, 90% of your deaths will be farming forwards, not farming backwards. Because it's really hard to gank a carry who's farming backwards. It's really hard. It's really easy to see a carry, like, walking towards you and just die. But it's really hard to see the Luna, like, right here, and then kill her as she does, like, this, 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 and this. It's, like, really hard. Because you have to, like, know she's doing that. You have to, like, smoke. And you have to cut her off, you know? It's, like, that's a really hard kill to come up, come after. So... That's what you're doing. You're putting yourself in more danger vir virtue via that problem. But you are showing up to fights that I don't think you should have to be at. This is... I'm really going to say this. You've done a great, jo great job of an analyzing, like, where you are on the map. And if a fight breaks out, you go to it. But now I need you to understand the principles that I've preached th throughout this entire replay such that you maximize the rest of the map before you end up in these scenarios. But the decision to show up to the fights you're at are quite good. Okay, so... Wouldn't have stopped at that um, large camp. The reason why I wouldn't have stopped at that large camp is because let's time it. So what happened by stopping at the large camp was you gave up some tower damage. You gave up... Um, you gave up... You gave up some tower damage, and you also missed one or two creeps under tower because you stopped at the large camp. But, like, let's look at the timer, right? You clear the wave, clear the big camp, clear this wave, right back to triangle, right? Because we want to end the triangle at the 17 minute mark. And you would have been able to farm the hard camp on the way back. So this is like all the stuff that you need to start crystallizing your minute marks, okay? Order of choice as a farm. Notice how you're farming backwards. Why did we give up that hard camp earlier? Or why did we give up waves in the lane earlier for that hard camp? It doesn't make any sense, right? Like to me, it's really obvious, but I need you guys to start thinking like this because that's the only way. So now you're farming forward again, but you got bullied away by Lesh. 18 minute mark. Okay. I'm gonna farm these out. Same thing here. I wouldn't be giving free tower damage to this Lesh rack. Definitely unnecessary just handing the tower over while the entire enemy team's top. This literally makes me want to vomit. But he fed to you because he's a weirdo. So I guess that works out. He's in 1k. Okay, same thing here. Minute mark, my friend. Minute mark, minute mark, minute mark. 1836. What could we do? What could we do to maximize? This creep wave, we know with 100% certainty, will be right here at, 1840, at 1850. Right here. What can we do between 1838 and 1850? Because you know you're going to the creep wave. Boom, boom. BSJ, what if those camps are dead? Well, at least he checked. He didn't even fucking check. So I don't, I don't know. Just missed two camps along the 18 minute mark. Okay. So notice, you're on a timer, man. You're on a fucking timer. I need you to know, every single time, you're ending the 20-minute mark at your Ancients. Just look. Look at the... Right? So, in my bracket, Dota is not quite this simple. But it really is close, okay? Because, like, in my bracket, people kind of know this shit. So it's like, if you do it just like a robot, then you're just going to feed to people who are predicting your movements. But in your bracket, just be a fucking robot.
literally just be a robot because you'll be optimal efficiency and nobody's going to stop you. And eventually you'll have to learn to like mix it up a little bit based on enemy movements and ganks and all that kind of stuff. But right now, 1944, beelining it to the ancients. Know that I want to farm that creepway bottom. I don't have the time to go do it. Manta. Boom. But instead we waste like nine seconds jerking it and then we miss another ancient in a large camp. Okay. TP to this fight. I'm fine with that. Maelstrom. Dude. Maelstrom. It's an offlane CK, dude. Do they have like an Ags? How do you have a Maelstrom? Dude, Luna's issue is not farming fast. Luna's issue is dying. Please just like buy a Scotty and a BKB. And then Butterfly Satanic. And we'll just call it good. Why do I have a Maelstrom? What the fuck? You don't have problems with illusions because you're Luna, and you don't have a problem with farming fast, so... The only hero this is even reasonable against is PL, maybe? And usually people just go Daedalus Shard to deal with that. I don't think I'll ever buy this item, unless it's like... Maybe like 1% of games on Luna, I'll buy this item. Uh, that's like just a really bad item. So you're trying to fight up a hill with no BKB. That's a fucking yikers. Okay, so here's your issue. A lot of people in your shoes do this, my friend. Every hero in the game of Dota 2 has what we call a home. Notice how you spent like 12 to 19 minutes in home. You were just home. You were pushing in bottom lane. You were farming the ancients. Pushing in bottom lane. Farming the ancients. And now you TP to a fight. Totally reasonable. I'm not flaming the TP. Now let's not lose sight of where we live. So what that means is... You got distracted. You saw a little butterfly fluttering in the wind, and you just completely forgot what you've literally been doing for seven minutes in a row. So let's just go back to what we were doing seven minutes in a row. So what that means is farm your way back, right? Like don't, I'm not telling you to like beeline it, but I'm telling you to like make your way there, you know, reestablish the equilibrium of the map. You know, that's what we need to do here. So you're gonna farm your way backwards. Making your way all the way towards bottom like we promised that we would and BSJ has taught us. We're going to make our way all the way bottom. All the way bottom we go. We're going to farm Ancients at 22 minutes. No, we elect to go with our team. We're going to now cut bottom. We're going to cut middle wave. We're going to cut middle wave and push bottom. Because that is what we've been doing for eight minutes. We've been pushing bottom. So we're going to go mid with our team to cut the wave. Because BSJ taught us that. That's important. And then we're going to walk bottom. No, we're going to go take a haste rune and run into their ancients and run back top. And do some random ass shit. And then we're going to walk back towards bottom. And then we're going to take a fight and die. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and wait for this equilibrium on the map to reestablish itself. Eventually... You will go back bottom, you will resume pushing it, and you will take that tier 2 for free. Eventually! Okay, we're walking back towards bottom, farming the camps that we've been farming. We're gonna keep- we're eventually! Okay, we don't feel comfortable fighting now, we went back for like a 25 minute Dragonlance weird champ. We're gonna push in mid, we're gonna walk back towards bot- We're waiting. We're still buying time, we're gonna make our way back towards bot- Oh my god, we won. Okay. Oh, nope, two for three. We're, the game is still stagnated. We are officially gonna go bottom. Literally nothing has happened in terms of objectives in the last seven minutes since we left bottom. We're, we're gonna go back bottom. We are gonna make it. To bottom we go. Back to bottom. Okay, we're gonna cut top and mid. Good, good. Top and mid. That's what we've been saying this whole time. We're gonna TP back bottom. And now we're going to push bottom. We're going to push bottom. Yes. Yes. We're going to push bottom. Yes. We're going to take the tower because there's nobody here. No. We're going to farm. Okay. We're now going to take the tower. Okay. We took bottom. The game can now proceed. We killed our carry for free because he's a dumbass. And we pressured. Okay. The game can now proceed. We took bottom tier two. We can now migrate to the top half of the map. We are going to take over their triangle and start cutting one wave with illusions and our other wave with the hero. No. We're going to let the top wave... Walk right past us. We're gonna let... The, okay, you're 34, 3041. You got 12 seconds before you gotta be at these ancients, because that's when you can stack it. They're dead. 
optimal efficiency. What can we do in 12 seconds? We could cut this wave, which is super important, and then come back to the creeps. But no, we're just going to let these creeps meander on by here, and then we're going to leave their ancients. We're just gone. They're all dead, but we're going to just not farm their side of the map. We're going to play our own side of the map. Okay, now we're out of space to farm because we're having to farm forwards instead of backwards because we didn't posture ourselves as aggressively on the map as we could have. And then we lost complete control of their triangle and they just walked into Roche. Okay. And now they're controlling this area because we gave it to them. And then... Okay, we take a two for two. Okay. But then Judge is going to kill us? No, we're fine. Okay. So we're going to walk back towards top. No, we're going to go bottom. Okay, we're gonna try to fight again with no Eclipse. No, no, we're not. No, yes, we are. No, yes. No, we're gonna go top. We're gonna go back top. No, we're not. We're gonna go top. Okay, we're gonna wait around the Ancients as they hold our hands there. Okay, yes. Okay, we're gonna walk back towards top. Good. Good. No, back to... We're gonna... There's no objectives at the bottom. We're gonna, we're gonna go... They're dead. There's no objectives here. We're gonna go... Bottom. We're gonna find a kill, but literally get nothing off of it because we're bottom when there's no objectives here. We're, we're just gonna keep being bottom, but we're gonna go top now and get Roche. No, we're gonna... Okay. That's really it for this replay. I've spent enough time analyzing it. Dota is a game of order of operations. Notice how the second you eventually went back bottom, the game progressed, you know? You stagnated at a 3K net worth lead, for literally nine minutes and all of that was you top and so the second you took bottom tier two you're like as a hero like luna you're super squishy the reason why luna plays like this let's go in depth real quick is because luna's really squishy early on and she farms really fast so she wants to play the bottom half of the map because it's super safe and she wants to just casually pressure the tower because the longer she stays there the more and more items she's getting so some heroes, they don't necessarily have to take the tier 2 bottom. Maybe they don't farm as fast. Maybe they come online earlier. So like the process of pressuring that tier 2 is like this process of giving your hero time to come online. But for a hero like Luna, you take the tower and then you proceed throughout the course of the game. That's just how Luna works. So you spent so much time farming the right part of the map, gently pressuring this tower, ramping up your items, ramping up your farm speed. You left for one fight top, and then you just never went back. And then the game stagnated for, like, a really long time. And now you took bottom tower. So as a farming hero, if you don't farm around objectives, then you just don't do anything. Like, your team gets kills, and then nothing fucking happens. Because the objective you have that you want to take is just nowhere nearby. So it's like anytime you kill a vent, like right, if we look at the map right now in terms of objectives to take, there's no objective down here. If you kill a Veno, it's like, what? What did that do? There's nothing fucking here. But if we're playing their triangle, once we've taken bottom tier two, if we kill them, we can go Roche, we can take this tower, we can take this tower, right? So the whole idea of going for this tower first on Luna is like a ramp up so you get super powerful so that you can do this. If you were to try to do this too early, you're probably just going to die right? And you saw it. You did it right here, and you died. So that's, like, exactly what happened here. So, order of operations, people. This is, like, one of those rules I lay out that has exceptions. Like, there are exceptions, but if you were to follow this script on any flash farming carry in the game of Dota, you would win any game in 1k. You will win every fucking game in 1k if you just kept shoving in bottom until you got, like, three items and took the bottom tier two and then you just migrate your way towards top and then you take over their triangle cut every single wave here cut every single wave here farm their triangle take roche walk back towards bottom or top it doesn't actually matter at that point because you can kind of just pick and choose based on the game and then you go high ground once you've pushed in two lanes you know like you just keep playing here until you pushed in two lanes you just keep playing here until you pushed in two lanes if you try to go bottom you just keep playing here until you pushed in two lanes and then once you've pushed in two lanes you take their towers right that's Dota. Anything you do that isn't that is literally just wasting time. If you liked this video, please like, comment, subscribe to the YouTube channel, all that shenanigans, because at the end of the day, YouTube does care about that. You may not care about it, I may not care about it, but the YouTube algorithm does. So, please do.